Okay, you see before you something I've been working on, golly, got to be five or six years, to get a translation of Isaiah 53 in English that matches his Hebrew meter. The purpose of this video is to explain that translation because it's very different from what you'll find in English Bibles, but it should be close enough to what you find in your favorite translation that you can follow along. I'm going to explain the Hebrew versus the English so that you know where I got it. It won't be, you know, an, an over taxing explanation. Hopefully. I, if I sound, you know, I had trouble talking, it's because I'm excited. This really means a lot to me. So, you know, if you don't want to listen, just turn it off. Okay, let's first just go through the structure. Okay, um, if you want to see this better, uh, let's show you how to see it when you download. You've got this document, it's two pages, it shows the whole chapter in English. And to see it best, um, just use Word and get to print preview. I'm using a version of Word that's before 2007. And in print preview, as you can see, it shows the whole page and then if you scroll the wheel of your mouse the second page occurs so you scroll it back away from you in order to see the first page and you scroll it toward you to see the second page now, I'm not going to use print preview to sh show this document because I need to highlight the words you can't do that in print preview alright so we're going to go back to the edit mode and I want to show you this first column is the verse that you can find in your Bible. The second column is the number of syllables in Hebrew and that really matters because Isaiah tracks history by clause just like Moses does. And I'm going to do more videos on Psalm 90 to show you how Moses is also tracking history by clause. This is the secret to Bible Hebrew meter that the scholars do not know. They just met in Rome. They have an international symposium every year. They don't even know or agree that Bible Hebrew has meter because they don't know its rules. And they don't know its rules because they don't understand the doctrine that God orchestrates time. That is a doctrine Christianity does not know. It's newly being explored now, but it's being explored by apostate pastors who write books and make money and they're doing it wrong. All right, so I'm going to show you how it is done. You can proof all this yourself and, you know, take it where you will. All right, verse, syllables, and you'll be able to proof these. All right, here's the translation in English I came up with using the meter. I'm not always happy with the translation, as I'm going to explain. This last column is the cumulative total because I want to show you, as I've shown you in previous videos, that this is the ending of a paragraph and it's divisible by seven. That's the rule that Moses follows. That's the rule that Isaiah follows. So other writers and other chapters of the Bible will follow these same conventions because Moses set the standard and Isaiah is following it. But I'm using Isaiah first because it's Isaiah that, that caused me to discover all these rules. Alright? And so see, it's divisible by 7. The cumulative total is 77 corresponding to David's age. Okay? And I keep a running tally. This is going on with the verse. That's 133 syllables, 168, 203. And then this is the rest of the chapter on the second page. See, cumulative 259. So that tallies to the videos you've seen. All right? It should because I proofed it before I started to show this. All right, and again, you can download this Word doc yourself from uh, the video description. Okay, let's go through the chapter. In Hebrew, Isaiah 53 starts here in Isaiah 52.13. That's indicated by what's called a samex. It looks like... Um, a leftward facing mouth with your tongue up. That's an S in Hebrew, one of the kinds of S's. It has three different kinds. And that, that Samex marker marks the end of 5212, and that's why we know this is a new chapter in 5213. That's very common knowledge among the Jews, but it's not common among Christians. All right? 
So this is where the chapter really starts. So this is why we know how many syllables to count. The first verse has uh, two, two clauses of eight syllables each. And the first verse I translated like this. Through truth my son prospers, rises. Okay, these words through truth that's not really the whole of what the Hebrew verb yaskil says. That's from sakal. That means to have skill as a result of knowledge, to have skill in using truth. It literally means a mastery of the truth through which you have prosperity as a result. So to translate that in English, I had to use this, this word here, through truth, and prospers. Whereas in your English translations, it usually says something really insipid like, My servant will act wisely, or my servant prospers. That's not what the Hebrew is saying at all. It's talking about through truth. Now we know the Lord became the way, the truth, and the life. This is where they get it from, Isaiah. That's where that statement in the Gospels comes from. That's why the Lord says that about himself. Because he did master the truth so much he became it. In his humanity, not just in his deity. Alright, now the word here translated my son is Avdi and the E sound means my. Okay? And that literally means slave. But you have to understand that in Hebrew culture and in many other cultures, Greek also, the son, the, the, the chief son, the number one son, is called a servant. It's a sign of his heirship. All right, You are a slave to your father until you prove worthy of your father, and then you inherit, and then become, as it were, adopted as a son, as well as being a son, maybe biologically. The Romans in particular use this. All right, So I translated it, my son, because that's who is in mind here. All right? Now the word rises is yarum, and it means, it doesn't just mean rise, but it, it, it ends up having that connotation. It means to, to rise up in life. It ends up meaning to be princely or lofty, but it's something you do that results in you being high. So that's why I'm translating it this way. This is technically the hip feel, which in Hebrew is a causative um, voice. It means it's that you yourself cause or something else causes it to happen to you. But usually if it's something else causing it, then that uses the nifal, which is a different stem. But this is hifil. Yeah, this is hifil. And this through truth prospers is also hifil. So they go together. In other words, what this verse is saying is through mastery of truth, prosperity results, and also he rises. Now, rises is meant to be a play on the ascension. Rises is meant to be a play on being raised up to pay for our sins. Rises is, is meant to be a play on resurrection. That's why I'm using the word here. Okay? Now we get to the second clause. And carried, exalted, greatly. Now your English Bibles use those words. Um, so I'm, I don't really need to say much, except that the actual Hebrew is dramatic like this. Okay, it's using it's it's using just two verbs, and then this word greatly here, ma'od, it really means vehemently, violently, violently. Okay, and, you know, in other words, sudden, sharp, shock, fast, huge, shockingly great, shockingly great. Not just great. And I advise you to look up the theological workbook of the Old Testament to see them talk about this word ma'od. M-E-O-D. The D has no dogish. All right? The O, M-E-O. The O is really an aleph with a little O dot underneath it. Okay? So that ought to be pretty clear in translations. I don't really need to explain that. Carried is nisa, and it means to carry. It means to be carried or to carry. It's in the nifal. Exalted, I want to say, well, Gavach, G-E-V-B, it's spelled with a B, but it's got no dogish, A-H, okay? And that that's exalted. So most of your Bibles translate that correctly. All right, now we got to get, and that's eight syllables. Okay, now we got to get here. 
Just as people appalled up at 